to Spirit of the Outdoors. I am doing a little bit of gun cleaning on this old 17 HMR, y'all. This is probably one of my favorite rifles that I have. This thing, I really can't stand here on camera and tell you what all it's killed. This has been a workhorse. And it stays nasty. You see the blue has done wore off the barrel. It is rusted. What I call a good patina. I, I learned watching American Pickers that if you'll say that's a patina and not rust, it sounds better. But anyway, um, it gets nasty. I haul this thing all around in the truck, in the buggy, and everywhere. And I bought it to run trap line with because I wanted something that I could shoot whatever. And this 17 HMR shooting these what I call a ballistic tip. I'm sure plastic tip, but these you see what I got. That's what I like to shoot in it. And I have got two clips. Well, actually I got about three or four clips, but I got two different kind of clips. This is a five round clip. And then I have a 10 round clip for it. They work good, but I shot it just a while ago. We were shooting about 120 yards, uh, shot to 30, 30. Um, now the old 30, 30 probably needs a cleaning too. But now I'm going to tell you open sights with this, I moved it over. It was shooting to the, to the right a little bit. We moved it back to the left. I got it lined up, but I'm shooting. I, I make him put a clip in there of the, I did an upright picture of the target and they, they spread out pretty good. But now we moved the site, moved it over and then changed demo. I went from a 170 grain Hornady and I bought some Fiat 150 grains, so they naturally higher at 120 yards, but now my eyesight ain't good with open sights that far, so I shot it, and I probably need to clean that barrel out too. Uh, but I know I was gonna show you something I was doing. When I was shooting this rifle, I shot it three times, and they spread out about like this at 120 yards, which is not good for this rifle. This rifle will stack them on top of each other. But the barrel needs work. So I've got this ballastol, and it ain't my favorite thing, but I am kind of experimenting with it. And you've got to have a certain brush now for 17 HMR. Most of these other brushes, and I'm brushing this barrel out real good. And this brush is really all about wore out, so I'm kind of being a little more vigorous than, than just running it in and out, you know, to follow them riflings. You see my brush is, is done. It's about shot. I need a new one. But I do have this that I think will clean 177. But before I do that, I wanted to show you what else I was fixing to do. While I was shooting this, one of the holes hung up in this chamber and didn't come out. So I've got a 22 caliber brush, and I was gonna tell you, if you had one to do this, chuck that up in your drill, I pull the bolt out. I'm going in the back, back here, and I'm not gonna try to run it up in the barrel, y'all. I'm just in the chamber right here. And I'm just going right in there in that chamber, and I'm brushing it out good. And I'm gonna spray a little ballastol on that. All right, now be careful. You don't want to ream nothing out, but it was getting gummed up in there. And it's just from a lack of cleaning, y'all. There ain't no excuses about it. It's just, but now when you've got guns that are workhorses, they's going to be that way. So I wanted to brush. I hadn't cleaned this gun up good, y'all, in a while. And this is an old, uh, this is a savage it is not what I really like. I'm not a fan of plastic stocked guns. But now for what I do with this one, it is it is good. Uh, and I had to, this sling has got this extra piece of rope on there. I had it, I can't remember now how I done it, but I had it where I could pull it across and it kept that gun from falling off my shoulder. I think I was just holding it, I don't remember, but anyway. 
I'll have to play with that. I done that last year, took it around, it kept sliding off my shoulder and I fixed this string some way that I wouldn't that it wouldn't do that anymore. Now I have to figure out now what I've done. So I like for gun oil, y'all, three in one. Now that Remington oil is good oil. Fix y'all back where y'all can look at me. That Remington oil is good oil, but I'll I'm getting ahead of myself. I wanted to stand it up. And this is a what what they call a snake, I think. Oh, I picked it up and it tied it in a knot. Yeah, buddy. So it's got a weight. You drop that weight down the barrel. I'm having to bounce it to make it go. These 17s is tight now, y'all. And I don't know if it'll pull that whole snake through there. So what I'm doing is I'm watching to see. Oh, I got it right here now. Let's see if I can. I'm gonna have to pick it up just a hair. I gotta get it to come out the back of there. It's supposed to drop all the way through, but with this 17, it never has done that. I don't need to be bouncing it on that table. Okay, we got it now, but we got it. Pull that joker right there. And that joker is fat. Okay, so let me do it like this, where y'all can see that thing. You got to get a hope to it now. You got to pull that joker out. It'll clean that barrel out, y'all. I'm telling you. And then it'll hang right there on them mechanisms. And then you got to get a stick and dig it out. That happened to y'all. Oh, it ain't that hard though. And I have actually built me a snake for the like the 50 caliber guns. I'll have to put all that up in a minute. So anyway. So now I'm going to take this and we're going to run a white patch through there just for the, actually I don't need that. Y'all have done got fumble fingered. I just thought this would make an interesting, it's Thanksgiving and me and daddy, I, I, y'all, I don't wind down a whole lot. I stay so I, I like to get stuff done. I am a go-getter. Let's get it, get it done. But today, I wanted to take time and piddle. So what did I do? I wound up out here cleaning and shooting guns. So that's a hobby to me. <laughs> get some of these patches. Them ain't the ones I want. I'm looking for the smaller square. There we go. That is what I'm after. Yeah, buddy. Gun cleaning patches. And I, this is a, I don't know what kind of box that was. So, y'all can see a little bit, can't you? And I just, I go all the way through to right there where I can get them. And y'all, after I pulled that snake through there, see, I didn't get a lot of, We'll run another through there, though. Oh, I shoved that too far. I knowed I was going to do that eventually. Where are you at, Patch? Right there. Still getting a little bit on it. Let's run another through it. Why I keep shoving them too far, I don't know. Well, it still gets, I'm gonna turn it backwards and shove. I ain't gonna keep digging them out. It's 
Still got stuff coming out, so I'm gonna keep running them through. I'm gonna really screw them with that. I imagine them rifling jaws haven't been cleaned out of this rifle, and it has had a bunch of rounds went through it. That thing unscrewed on me. I couldn't tell you what all I've killed. I've killed I've killed countless deer with it. Should you? Probably not. But it'll flat do it, and I didn't have to hunt them either. Shoot them in the neck, they lay it right there. Most of it was 50, 75 yards. I was running trap line and hopping up on, and there's a deer, and I need meat, and bam, there, down she went. I have killed several decent bucks, two eight points and a couple of six points with this rifle. So for the people that, you know, think, oh, it won't do it, it will. Should you do it? No, absolutely not. I wouldn't, I wouldn't sit here and say, everybody go get you a 17 HMR to deer hunt. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. But don't try to argue with me that it won't kill one either. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But now, rabbit gun, you want to go shoot rabbits late in the afternoon, this thing right here is dangerous. And I was telling somebody about shooting squirrels, and they've tried to comment, do not hunt squirrels that have you can't shoot, you know. It'll blow them all to pieces. Well, if you shoot these bullets, it will blow them all to pieces. If you head shoot them carefully and you can hit them in the head, it'll it'll work. Uh, you won't have a head to, to cut off. It'll already be gone. Uh, but now, my main thing is, is I was trying to do predator control too, and I wanted something with a little more range than a 22. And this was my choice. I walked in a pawn shop to buy a 204 Ruger. And when I looked at the 204, there was a lot of problems. The ammo was the same price as the 270s and all that. The bullet speed on it was so ridiculous that when it hits something, it blows out the other side pretty good. Um, I know I got a friend of mine that's got one, so I knew. the uh, It was as loud as any of the other ones, so... You know, as far as me scaring off other game, and I, I wanted something a little quieter. Know what I mean? A little, little quieter. And this wound up being ticket. I walked out with this, and I have never regretted this rifle. So it's got a Nikon scope on it. And this right here leather is so when I stick it down in the truck seat, between the truck seat and the console, that leather protects that stock from getting all scuffed up and such as that. So y'all, I have got this about, I got one more patch laying here. I'm gonna run it through just for the sport of doing it. But I got this about as clean. And I don't know what twist this is, y'all. I don't even know if the barrel says it. it well, it might up here. No, it don't. 93R17, 17 HMR only, the Savage Arms in Canada. Westfield. It don't say. It don't say. All right. What I was going to do earlier now when I got my car ahead of my horse, I'm going to put a little bit of this uh, three in one oil on that. And then I'm going to take this water patches that I just was using and I'm going to use them to rub that oil all on that boat good. And then I want to drop a little bit down in this firing mechanism where the bolts and all work, them working parts. And then a little up here where these extractors and stuff is. Let it soak in there. A little drop. And I'm probably putting way more oil than is necessary. But now it has pulled out a lot of bullets and it probably needs... them catches in there and I use an old toothbrush 
I quit brushing my teeth, so I use them to clean my gun. <laughs> oh. What have I done now? John, she's ready to go. Now I need to. I got a clean rag right here. I need to clean that scoop lens off good, and I need to protect this barrel a little bit. So for that, I had to had a had a had a what happened to my hey? Where is that? I had another rag I could run this grease fat, bat, skunk fat and stuff around on. That's what I like to rub these barrels with. Help protect them. Works real good in cold weather. Cause that barrel will rust on me out toting it around in this nastiness. And I'm not gonna clean it up stick and stand. Just good enough. So anyway, I'm fixing the loader back up. I gotta go get some ammo. So anyway, that, well, I just wanted to go through kind of how I clean out my guns occasionally. I know we don't do a lot of uh, gun videos here, even though I use a lot of guns. I have not dove off into hunting season hard yet. It has just now got cold weather. It's very nice outside. Nice and overcast. But it's Thanksgiving, so we fixing to go eat here shortly. Or, and if I get time, we may shoot the thing. I know the video done long, so this is Cleaning the Rifle. Thank y'all for watching Spirit of the Outdoors. We'll see you next time. Remember, the best way to do things is the way you like to do it. We'll see y'all. Y'all have a good one. All right. Had to get all my predator stuff together. I got a predator light somewhere that'll mount right on that barrel.